Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, boom. Corita, do you want to record on your computer? You, it'll be on Facebook. I can. Oh, I can, that's I, fine. I, yeah. Okay. Sure. I can, so I can set it if you want to. Sure. Do that. Yes, that'd okay. be awesome. That, that'd because be awesome. I might I'm, have to leave before you're finished. Before okay. Okay. I'm allowing it. Allowing it right now. So. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All Thank right. You. Well, we are glad everybody is here tonight. We got a few less than we did last time. There's Kathleen. We've already started Kathleen. So thanks for being here. Uh, I'm excited about what we're going to do tonight. We're going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then I'm going to put it on speaker view and then later on I'll take it off. So, uh, can y'all see my yeah, desktop? Yeah. Yep. You can see it yes. where it says welcome to. All right. Good deal. All yeah, right. I'm well, good. uh, we are glad you're here. It was a uh, good. I'm trying good. to, yeah, I got it. We got a problem, Roy. No, I have, yeah. I have. BibleSoft setting up, but I can't seem to close it to get it out of the same oh, yeah, Because you won't want it open while I'm showing you this. Right, and that's why I'm trying to get out, but it's not letting me. And you push, me. Push, it takes a while to set up. You can push escape or whatever. So. Yeah, I'm trying that right now. Just All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue. Go ahead. Okay, but y'all can see the desktop, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, just again, I want to welcome you to our ministry and uh, Zoom meet. And we have Cecil on here, and we have uh, Barry Miller and Judy and Carita and Kathleen and some other will be joining with us. And of course, we're doing it live on Facebook. So uh, there was a lot of people that went on there. I can see people going high already. There we uh, go. I'm not. I'm not going to take Perfect. the time to answer them. But to, I, I'm not going to teach. Him. I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time teaching how to translate because I've said this to many people. They call me and want to know how I translate scripture. And I, I'm not, I don't say this piously. I really don't. I think most of you know my heart, but I don't think anybody just should start translating scripture just to be doing it just because you want to. Uh, I've had a few people tell me they were going to and they gave up. It's not that easy. And the way that the the uh, interlinears are done. The people that write them, the people that are involved in the translation, they interject a lot of their belief systems. And I'm sure a lot of my writings are affected by what I know, but I believe I know a whole lot more than I used to know, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, but I want to show you how to use this program because it's a fabulous program. I'm also going to show another one to you. Uh, it's titled eSword and it's free to download. It's a great program. But we're going to talk tonight about Bible translations, the Greek, uh, how to search the Greek and Hebrew words, uh, how, how I do translate scripture. And then I'm going to show you some dictionaries and other references there, too. So if any of you are new watching this on Facebook, you can see my link there. I, uh, I, my, my web page that you can go to that there's a lot of resources on. And that's not showing on Facebook for some reason. Of course, I think it's behind it. There it goes. Now it's showing. Uh, but on my web page, I have uh, some of my uh, translations, quite a bit of them on there. I have some videos. I have some music from our previous worship group. That's some really good music on there and some uh, parts of books that you can read. I'm also on YouTube. I put all my videos. I've been a little slothful lately. I've been taking my college classes, so I haven't had time at Global Grace Seminary to upload my videos there, but they're on YouTube. And then I have Apple Podcasts under Dr. Roy Richmond. That's probably about eight or nine more podcasts. So uh, also Cecil told me I should bring this up. So I'm going to, uh, I have a lot of followers on Facebook, close to 5,000 uh, Facebook connections. And basically we have about three people that send us any kind of support at all, really four that send us support. And I appreciate those, but uh, you know, I'm thinking about starting a deal for anybody that would be interested. Maybe if they're willing to put in like a $25 a month contribution, to have some special teachings available to just them, uh, where I would do a minimum of four months. Also provide all the documents that I teach from. If I teach a series, I'll, I'll provide all those notes and everything. So if anybody's interested in that, there's a thing down there called uh, uh, tinyurl.com forward slash donate to Tree of Life. So if not, no big deal. So, hey, Ivan, it's good to see you on here with us. I'm gonna ask him to unmute and be with us. So I'm going to start now. So I am going to bring up the PC Bible study and y'all need to let me know. Can you see that? Yes. You, you can all see yes. it and you, you can see it clear. Okay. Yep. So this is a program that I had some friends. Uh, I believe it was Sharon Tweehouse 
and her deceased husband bought this for me back in 1996 uh, when I have start, first started Tree of Life Fellowship. And I was so excited to get it. Back then, it was about a $350 program. And so uh, I finally learned how to use it. And so this right here, this you can make this go away. You know, there's things you can do here, but it's Spurgeon's morning, evening things to read. But right up here is what's most important. You have, uh, you have, of course, there's file up here where you can restore your desktop if you made it where you didn't like it. And then there's tools, which has a Bible reading plan. I never use this. There's a place to take notes. I never use that. And then there's options here and it shows your text style, your preferences, like when you click your preferences, you can go down here and you can pick which Bible you want to be on top or on bottom, what type of uh, reference organizations, fonts, like right here, I clicked on reference work. And so I can move those up or down. Uh, mine has Adams Clark's commentary. That's about the only one I ever really look at. Now you guys have a, I don't think you have as full a version as I have, but this right here shows what I've got all in, the, in my program. And so I've got several different translations of Bible in here. I've got uh, Strong's Greek Hebrew, which I use a lot, which you should have that yourself. But, uh, you know, I'll kind of show you some more of this later on. And then uh, there's options here. Uh, we already did that. And then if you ever want to get hold of BibleSoft, right here is online. There's their web page. Uh, they have references on work uh, for sale that you can go to the web page and buy things. But this is how you use it. Right here is your Bible. That's, that's the Bible translation. Uh, when I want to move this over here. I move my mouse over there. I move that over just a little bit. But when you click on your Bible, you will have, this will pop up. Sometimes if you don't see it, it's because you, if you have two monitors, it's over on another monitor or whatever. And this is where you search your scripture. So there's a drop down box right here and it shows all the versions that you have right there. I have mindset where King James comes up first. The reason why is that I know of the, and I'm used to using King James because when I translate from King James, I feel like that I can, you know, I can translate back to more of the original text from the King James than any other version. Because a lot of versions, instead of really translating, they'll just translate the word that the King James used. So for instance, if they put devil in there, rather than going to see what that word means, they'll just say devil, or they'll say Satan, or whatever. So they, all they do is just kind of take the English word and they translate it from the English. And we know the Bible wasn't written in English, but most people think it is, you know, they swear by it. So I leave that on King James. And this is where you would type in your references. So say I want to go to John 316. I just highlight this right here. And I type in John 316. And then that comes up for me right there. And so and you can just keep scrolling down if you want to. Uh, I learned real quick that this bar over here, if you try to move this bar over on the right side, and you see where I'm at? Y'all see that bar? Now, yeah. 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 If I try to move that, it's going to go 10 chapters at a time. So I never use that. I just use my will to go up and down. Mm -hmm. And so if you say you find a verse and you want to put it into your document, uh, it has a cut and paste ability right up here at the top. See where I'm okay. moving? And that needs to be clear because I've got something on there. But all you do is you highlight it just like you would in a Word document. And you highlight whatever you want. And then you just put up here and put copy. And then you can go to your Word document and you paste it right in there. Or if you're on uh, Facebook and you want to share scripture with somebody, do the same thing. Copy it copy it and then just go go right over to Facebook and push it in there and put paste and it'll put it in there for you. So I'm sure y'all are very familiar with copy and paste. So that's, and we'll go, we'll use this a lot more tonight, but that's how you find your scriptures. And then here's your concordance. And this is where you want to search for a word. And what you've got to understand many times you'll recall to your remembrance, a scripture or part of a scripture and you want to search for it. But if you don't use the Elizabethan language, you're not going to find it. I mean, you know, it uses, it uses like shell and thou and, you know, mm -hmm. different words are spelt different. And it can be very frustrating if you don't know exactly how it was written. 
So a lot of times I'll just put one word in there or whatever. But so let's just say we want to find the verse that says the truth will make you free. And you're not sure what the address is. You just type in truth will make you free. And that's too many words. So it maybe says something else. So I'm just going to say will make you free. Or just will make you. There you go. So, but that doesn't, that doesn't show the one that I want. I want the one that says will make you free. So we'll go back off of that and we'll go to concordance again. And I'm just going to say make you free. There you go. John 8, 32. And the truth will make you free. And for some reason, it's not showing it over here. Every once in a while, I have that problem, and it won't show it over here. But that's how you search for scripture. So it shows up in John 8, 32, shows up in that verse there. And you can ask questions as I go. So stop me if I'm going too fast or something. And so say you want to do a study on wisdom. You just want to follow the trail of wisdom. You type wisdom in, and there's all the verses for wisdom. And I want to, I don't know what's going on here. I'm going to go out of this and open it back up real quick. Give me just a minute. <clears throat> We're in PC Bible study. Can you make it any bigger? Huh? Can you make it any bigger? I it's just covered my whole screen. <laughs> what, are, what are you looking on? A phone or a... No, my phone is yeah, it covers my, whole, I've got my whole screen showing it. Yeah. <clears throat> just the font is so tiny. Oh, the font, yeah. It's just, it, I, I've tried to make the font bigger in them, and I'm not able to. Mine takes a while to load up for some reason. Most, uh, a lot of people just comes right up, but mine takes a few minutes to come back on. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so let's go back. And we said wisdom. <clears throat> it's still not showing over. It's supposed to be showing the verse over here for some reason. I don't know why it's not. <clears throat> it's supposed to show it over here. You know, when you're doing stuff like this, you always have all kinds of technical difficulties. But so here you go. You can travel the trail of wisdom all through the Bible. So sometimes I have a particular subject that I'm going to teach. And I'll put that word in there and I'll just find particular verses that really stand out to me, something that I want to use, uh, you know, and like you want to see what the word wisdom means in the Hebrew, you click on that verse right there. And then right up here, see that scroll? Can you see that scroll? Yep. That's the Hebrew Greek. So you click on that with your left mouse and you'll go down to verse. And then you go over to interlinear Bible and click on that. And that's the verse you want to look at. And so you go down, put OK. And there's the Greek and Hebrew. So say you want to see what wisdom look, means. I'm going to move my pictures out of here. So I'll, So you want to see what wisdom means. There, there's a Hebrew word for it. You double click on that number with your left mouse. And there it is. So it says wisdom in a good sense. Uh, now, when, when you, what you want to do, you don't want to go by what the translators writes after that. If they put a bunch of other stuff, sometimes they'll give other words to click on right, right here. This is a root word. So when you hear me talk about the root word, it doesn't mean the word afterwards, because sometimes it's the word before it, but it's a root word that they put in there. And that means to be wise. And that's the, that's the Hebrew word for it. So to be wise in mind or word or act. Roy, do they pronounce the Hebrew or in the Greek for us? Well, right there it says kakakam, <laughs> ka yep. you know, but, but you know what I do when I don't know how to pronounce something real well? Yes. I, I, I copy that, I right click and I copy it, or I, okay. go up here, I go up here and copy it, okay, so I copied it, and then I open up my uh, Word document, let me find it down here at the bottom, there we go. Now, some people don't have their computer to enabled to do this yet, but Word will read to you. But I can't tell you she pronounces it perfect, 
but I put it in here and then I put the cursor right here and I go up under re uh, review and I put read aloud. Can you hear it? You can't hear it, can you? No. Yeah, because it's just only reading on my computer, but it actually reads it to me. That's but you good. know what? I don't worry about it. I don't know anybody that actually speaks 100% uh, Hebrew or whatever. So there's how they show you how it's pronounced. Call Cam, K-H-A-W, Cam. And so if I want to pronounce it, I do it the best I can there. You see that? Yeah. Call Cam. So, you know, one of the subjects I'm going to be speaking on pretty soon is spirit. You know, so what is spirit? You know, if you, you guys have all been on here with me before, spirit is a Latin word. You know, so they translated breath from spirit. So if you click on it, it's actually the cool of the day. And it's the same thing as Ruach, but it says from wind are breath and spirit is breath. And so there's where you can kind of study Ruach a little bit. There's a root word there for it that talks about to blow, to breathe, you know, so that's just a little bit about how we'll get into more of that later on. Okay. But this, this is just how you do some searching. Uh, again, you can't remember what scripture it is. And so you can use this concordance to search for a certain word or whatever. And I have found Google be almost as powerful. I can yeah. go to Google and I can say, where does it say? The truth will make you free and click it and there it is it shows it to you yeah it's very effective <laughs> well google is connected to everything in the world i mean it's very pretty effective. much yeah, yeah. So my, very my, effective. my essays i've been writing i've been doing a lot of google searches for documents and things to research with but this look this box right here when you're doing your uh concordance uh if you can have it search just one particular chapter if you just you're working on one chapter you can change it to Exodus and change this to Exodus and it'll only search in Exodus. Over here, you can say Old Testament only or New Testament only or whole Bible like I do. And again, you can change the virgin, version of it. So does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then there's topics. And again, I'm not sure how many topic, topics you have in the free version but it's got Foss's Bible dictionaries. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, use that a lot, but it's got Nelson, it's got the new Ungners. And a lot of times when I wanna look up a particular word and find out some information on it, I, I really like new Ungers and sometimes Nave's topical Bible. So those are in there. And then you probably have some commentary. I've got, I don't use any of these except for Adams Clark. Uh, I, sometimes I wanna see what he said because he had a real understanding of our union with, 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 the, with the Lord, with God. And there's several, every, every once in a while I find something that I really, really like, and I'll put it in one of my sermons. But, you know, it's got Wycliffe Bible commentary, uh, oh, word right. studies, all those. Those are nice tools. And then right here you have my personal notes. So if you click on that, anytime you put a note in something, you can, it'll bring that up and it'll show what you've typed on that subject. So, you know, if you're new to this, Sometimes it's nice to start with that. And every time you find something that really stands out with you, make a note of it, then it's always going to show up in your, your personal notes there. And again, there's the Greek and Hebrew. And we're, I'm going to show you more on this after a while. But if you know a Strong's number, particular number, and you want to just find it by the number, you can click there, click Strong's and Hebrew, and then you can put a number in there right there and it'll give it to you. So let's say... Uh, one of them I'm going to do tonight is, uh, I mean, today, 12, 2, 2, 8, which is Nibelos. I can just click it right there, and, and uh, I want it in the New Testament, and click it, and it shows it up to you. It shows it right there. So that's a really good way if you know the number. You know, or somebody say, well, what about such and such number? You know, you can go look it up, and you'll know what you're talking about. And that has books. <clears throat> uh, it has a Bible study, Understanding the Bible. Again, there's commentaries in there, uh, and, and they will give you, once. if you were to buy this, you can get free books all, every once in a while, but uh, most of these I bought or they came free with a program. It's got outlines uh, for Nelson Bible. It's got sermons, Spurgeon sermons, which I never use that at all. And then this is library, 
and this is in my library and I've got all kinds of stuff in here that I can click on and read it if I want to. So that's everything that's in my program right there. Okay. So let's, let's just do some looking at scripture and talking about translations and things like that. You know, we talked about, I think we talked about last week, the wrath of God. Uh, somebody asked about it. Where the wisdom's not on here tonight, is he? So mm -hmm. in Revelation, that's a word phrase. I'm going to do it this way. So we're going to go to Revelation 14.10. <clears throat> and this is one that really got me a long time ago because I, I, I kept thinking, well, if there's no place called hell, and then why does this talk about the wrath of God? And it says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So I thought that was kind of crazy. If that was hell, why would holy angels and Jesus want to watch that going on? So I looked it up. So what you do, I'm here. And so I'm going to look at the Greek and Hebrew. So I go up to this scroll, Greek and Hebrew. And I, I put by verse, and then I go to interlinear, and I click on that, and then, yes, that's the verse I wanted in, so I click OK. And then it breaks it out. So here, here's what I start doing then. I look at these, and I want to see what the words mean. And then I understand biblical terminology, and I'm sure most of you do, but I don't have to look up at wine because I know wine always represents joy. It, it, in the table of showbread, when the priests were eating from the six stacks of bread on each side. They, they, got, they received a great revelation and they picked up that wine and they drank it because it brought them great joy. That's a picture of that. But wrath, so we look at wrath and you double click on that number and you see thumos, which is passion, as in breathing hard. And then you don't worry about what they wrote here. That, that's just Strong's putting their idea or the Catholic religion, whoever it was but it's passion, passion is love. And then you click on 2380 and it means a rush or to breathe hard. And so it's, it's literally the love of God. And I'll show you the other word that uses Gory Orge here in a, in a little bit, but it's actually the love of God. And then you put, it's poured out without mixture into the cup of its indignation. Well, right there is the same word that they use in wrath and many other places. See where it says Orge's? Yeah. And you, you yeah. click on that, and it says orgasm, orgasm. which is where, get the, it's where you get the word orgasm, which is a very intimate experience. And it talks about the, water, the reaching out, the excitement of the mind. And then you go to the root word, and it says uh, to stretch oneself, to reach out after. That doesn't sound like indignation, does it? No. At all. And then what was interesting, I, I know the word fire mean is the word of God, correct? But God says this is not my word of fire. And it's scripture also, also scripture says, I make my messengers flames of fire. And so that's the word of God. So what is brimstone? So when you click on brimstone, the first one is the ion, which is sulfur. Sulfur is a cleansing agent. It cleans. And then you go to the root word. Somebody, I can hear somebody uh, like, uh, background noise or something you might need a might need a mute and then 2304 you look at that and it says ceios which is godlike and then the root word to that is ceios which is god so literally what this is talking about is talking about people that won't come to the to the knowledge of god and it said, let them drink of the joy of the love of God, which is poured out with any mixture, which would be a religious mixture, and the cup of his love. And literally, this word here means travailed. They will be travailed in birth with the word of God and the presence of messengers, which that's us, holy messengers, and in the, as the presence of Jesus Christ. That's what that stands for. Any questions there? Nope. What what does tormented mean? It's 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 actually travail. It means it's literally 
they put that word there, but it's the same word as they would use when it talks about the sun clothed woman travailing to give birth. The woman that, you know, the woman that was, uh, Isaiah said, we've been at like a woman travailing to give birth and all she's done is brought forth wind. So that's what that means there. Okay. Okay. And then I've just got several of them I want to show you. And so you can look at a lot of places. Some place wrath is used but it's not talking about God. It's talking about people or situations. But indignation is orge and wrath is orge anytime it has to do with speaking about Father. And then I wanna to go to 1 Corinthians 11:29. So I click on the Bible and I type in 1 Corinthians and you don't have to spell it out. You can abbreviate it, 11:29. And this is the one where it talked about not discerning the Lord's body. We've, I've mentioned this before. It talks about when we drink the, uh, eat the bread and, and drink the wine. It's talking about communion elements. And uh, it talks about if they take this and they're, they're, not, uh, they're not taking it for the full weight of it, it says they drink it unworthy, unworthy, unworthily. And that word unworthily does not modify the person that's doing it. it. It modifies the action, the way they eat, the way they drink. In other words, the way we feed on the, on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then it says here for not discerning the Lord's body. So all my life, I thought that I, you know, I was in trouble if I wasn't understanding Jesus's body and what happened to Jesus. But when you look that up, you put your mouse, your cursor over here in front of number 29 and you go up and do Greek Hebrew and you click on that. And right there, what does it say under Lords? Nine, 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 nine. Uh oh, they added that. 9999 and you click on 9999 and you go down here where it's at and it says this word was added by the translators for better readability in the English and it wasn't it was added to make us make us think it was talking about Jesus but it's actually talking about our body not discerning not knowing the word discern means to dissect it means to separate thoroughly see right there I clicked on discern. It means to separate thoroughly or it means to withdraw from. So our body is the body of God, right? It's, our body is perfect. But so when we feed on the revelation of Jesus Christ and we don't, we don't understand it and we don't know who we are, then we, we can't, we're not separating thoroughly who we are and we can't make withdrawal. Does somebody have somebody talking behind y'all? If you do, you might want to mute your mic somewhere because it's really coming through. I don't know where that's coming from. All right. So, uh, okay. So I wanted to look at verse 29 here where it says damnation. I'm going to click on damnation and it actually says a decision. So if, if I don't see any importance in the word of God, if I don't see any importance and understand what Jesus did. If I don't know who I am, then I'm making a decision against myself. I don't know where they got the word damnation from. And so that's, that's how I go through these things and I see these things. If I click on 2919, it means to distinguish properly. And of course they added condemn and punish, but that's not what that means. Crino means to distinguish. So I'm not distinguishing who I am, I'm not distinguishing what Jesus did, what he revealed. And so I'm doing that in a measure, a measure. But, but the truth is what you need to see here is what else did they add? They added unworthily. See that? So why do they do this kind of stuff? Well, because they want us to feel condemned. They want us to feel not worthy. And so, you know, that's, that's how you can go through these places and really see where they added stuff, where they translated words wrong. And it is, it's very, very tough. I spend hours and hours going through these scriptures and it just, it blows my mind sometimes. I wish there was enough people doing this so we could get a Bible done where we can see the truth when we read it. But, you know, we have the spirit of God to help us. And we also have, uh, uh, have these tools that's been provided for us that we can go through these and really learn, learn from people. I mean, learn from these translations here. And so let me see what else I got. 
Okay, Acts 836. I think some of you saw this last week, but for people who are on here on, on uh, uh, Google or on uh, Facebook, I want to show this to them. So when you're done with this, you can right click it and, and, and close the tab or all the way over here, you can see a red button to the right and you can close that out. But if you have several things open, you want to want to close one of them, you close one tab. All right, so uh, Acts 836. And I'm going to show you this also in the uh, eSword. So this is where uh, Philip was talking to a eunuch. He heard eunuch, uh, the, the eunuch reading out of Isaiah, and the Spirit of the Lord prompted him to go over close to his carriage or, 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 and, and ask him, do you understand what you're talking about? And the eunuch answered and said, uh, he wanted to know who speaketh the prophet this, and he wanted to understand. And Philip began to explain the scripture to him, and then he began to preach Jesus unto him, explain what Jesus taught. And then eunuch said, and, as they, and he had invited him into the chariot, so they were driving. And the eunuch said, uh, when they're on the way, and they saw some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And what got me when I read this is he said, Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, I don't think you have to believe to be baptized personally. So I thought, I'm going to look that up. So verse 37, I click my mouse on there. I go up here and I put Greek and Hebrew, interlinear Bible. Yes, that's what I want to see. And what do you see right there? Nine, 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 nine. Nine, 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 all the way across. They added the entire verse. And I have seen so many verses in the Bible that have been added. It's just, it's just crazy. And it's always added to make you think that you've got to get saved. It's added to make you think that you're a sinner. And that did not say that. Philip did not say that. He, he just said, Stay, let's, let's go. They told the chariot to be still. They both got in the water and, the, and Philip baptized him. And then instantly, Philip translated to another place, another city to teach. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Sounds like it'd be a good sermon for a Sunday, Sunday morning for somebody. Yeah, if you want your elders to stone you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful. And, and let me show you something. This is eSword. And, you know, you might like this. You can download it. It's free. It's called eSword. It's a free program. And uh, what I like about it is uh, it's a pretty easy tool, but I, I haven't really learned how, or I haven't even took the time to learn how to use their uh, uh, interlinears. But I have, I have like John Corson. This is the man that I first began to really learn the Bible. He was in Jacksonville, Oregon. So I've got his New Testament commentary there, and I've got Adam Clark's commentary there. But over here, these are all the free, not all of them are free. I had to pay for message. But these are the Bible versions up here at this tab here. So I'm going to go down here to ver verse 37, and where it said, uh, uh, verse 37. So in the King James, it's there, right? The King James is there. Y'all can go ahead and unmute if you want. I don't think I hear anything with you guys. And then the King James Plus, which shows the words, it's there. It's still there. But then look at the Message Bible. The Message Bible, they didn't put it there. It goes from 36 to 38. Isn't that interesting? So they knew it wasn't there. And then uh, this one here, it's not there. Several of them, it's not there. Webster, which a lot of people like Webster, it's there. And Weymouth, it is there. And I didn't think it would be, but it is. Young's Literal, which people quote from, it's there, but it's italicized. Which tells you it was added. But the majority, the majority of people in Christendom don't know that. They don't understand that if something's italicized, that it was added. And most religious minded preachers will not tell them that because they want them to do that. So that's why I say I like to translate from the King James because these translators, they still put it in there even though it was added. 
And a lot of the interlinears today, uh, they don't show the 9999 numbers. Even the new, the new Strong's concordances that are out, they don't show the added numbers anymore. And that's why I'm very glad that I have this program. But this program has a compare button, so, uh, and it has a parallel, so it shows, you know, there's different tools there that you can use. And then there's a, I forget where it is, but it, where you can put, like if I'm look, looking at Acts 1, there's a tool, I think, where you can show every translation of it right all through here. So it's a nice program. It's called the, the e sword, e hyphen sword, and you can download that free. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay, let's look at another verse uh, Hosea 6 2. It talks about, you know, I'm not going to explain all this, but it, it talks about after two days, we will revive, he will revive us. The third day will raise us up. You know, I believe there's a great, I believe we're in the third day of the Lord, as far as spiritually speaking. And there's a massive amount of people living, uh, waking up to who father is. But this is one of those places where, where it says we shall. <clears throat> and not all places, but any place it would be like, we shall be righteous. We shall be holy. You know, it actually says we exist. And so I'm going to put my cursor on two, uh, verse two, and I'm going to do Greek and Hebrew. I love seeing those love, love things coming up in Facebook. It makes me feel all mushy <laughs> before we're doing love. Okay, see where it says that we shall live right there? Double click it. And it says to live, and it says, and then we go to this word here, and it says to live again, and then it says to show, and one of those says exist, but literally what it says is we show or we live as the face of God. And over here, where it says in a sight, it's uh, panium, and it's an unused noun, and it says the face again and then i believe this one is is the face or to appear so it doesn't say we shall it says we show we show the face of god we exist as the face of god we are the face of god not shall be the face of god but they love to use shall be like it's some kind of future event and then uh Let me look here. I'm going to... Okay. Y'all want to see where you find the word devil again? Yeah. I have All a right. question. Yes, ma'am. This question, I'm thinking of the verse that says, we shall be like him. Shall be like him. Okay. Let me find that one. So what we do is we would use the concordance. <clears throat> And also, Kathleen, I don't think it was here when I said this. When you use the concordance, you have to type in it exactly like the language was because, because it uses thou and doth and things like that. So sometimes it's a little hard to find it. So we shall, is this the one you're talking about? Yeah. Have not yet appear, we shall be. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to look at the Greek and Hebrew. <clears throat> Shall be right here. Will be, not shall be. See there? Yeah. Isn't that funny how they change that to shall be? See what this says. Uh, this is I exist. That's the one where it says I exist. Almost every place where you find shall be, it's, it's this right here. It's E-I-M-I, -I, and it's the first person singular, and it's I exist. I find it all over the Bible. But I, th I think it's real interesting that the very first word said will be, and they change it to we shall be. Yeah, as if it's future. When it's yeah, never. it's going to happen in the future. See yeah. where it says he shall appear? Let's see what that says. Render apparent, not shall. So, and here's another we shall see. We shall see. And that is... Uh, 
wide, it's not shell, it says we will have wide, wide open eyes, which we do already. We're able to see because we're, we're, we're looking with our single eye, with our spirit. So did they do this on purpose to like keep Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, they did. You know, some of the places in the Old Testament where the prophets were speaking, uh, where Abraham and Moses, what they said was from perceptions. You know, they, it's just like I say all the time, God, I translated it and where uh, father told Abraham to bring his son up to the mountain. And he said, I'll show you which mountain to ascend to. That's all he said. And he was, anytime father bring, wants us to come up to the mountain, it's always for a revelation. And Moses, I mean, Abraham's the one that told his son that God wants me to sacrifice you. God didn't say that. But the reason he said that is because he was used to sacrificing to the god Moloch and to uh, uh, the moon god. And, uh, and they always had to sacrifice. So when he had experience with Jehovah, he just assumed God wanted him to sacrifice his son. Even though people say that he had faith that he'd raise him up again, it's not true. He didn't do it. But all these verses I'm showing you, they did it on purpose. Uh, the Catholic religion, uh, some, pe some people say the Church of England was part of that. Uh, they translated it to produce fear. Uh, if you remember, I talked about how Dante, Dante's Hell was a comedy, and he wrote plays, and he wrote the one called Dante's Hell, and the Catholic religion was going broke, and they needed money, and they came up with this idea to take these, these belief systems of demons, devils, Satan, Lucifer, uh, hell, and they, they made it real, and they scared people half to death. And when they translated scripture, that's what they enforce the translators to do is put that in there. And again, that's why the Reformation took place, because when Martin Luther saw that going on, he was translating the book of Romans, and he saw where it said, the just shall live by faith, not by giving money, not by indulgence, not by all that. And he tried, he, he didn't think the Pope really knew what was going on. And of course, the Pope did, told him to shut up, quit writing, and, and he couldn't do it. And that's when the Reformation started. And then also uh, people started turning against the, the priests. They started killing priests, burning the, the chapels down, and they had to stop it. So a couple of Riverian priests came up with the doctrine of rapture and told everybody that Jesus was coming back any minute. They needed to straighten up. And of course they did. You know, so yes, they did it on purpose. Definitely. So the rapture is a big thing talked about on Facebook today. I don't know why people can't wake up and go look at history. It's been talked about all our life, hasn't it? Yes. Ever, ever since I was a teenager, it's going to happen. Remember the Seven Day War, you know, and, with Israel, and, and it was going to happen then. And then 1988, you know, uh, 88 reasons why, G or eight reasons why Jesus is coming back in 1988. I was working for Bob Mills Furniture there, and all the employees were wanting to get saved. They knew I was a preacher, but after it was over with, they just went right back to their life. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's, it's really sad. It is rather, rather silly. All right, I'm going to show you devil. <clears throat> uh, there's right over here are the Greek numbers form for the word devil. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put uh, by Strong's number so we can just type them in. So we're going to do this. And so we want to do, see what 1228 means. So I'm typing 1228 and we will just do the New Testament. And it says Diabolos and it says traducer. Everything after this is what they added, specifically Satan, you know, devil, but it's traducer. And when you look up the word traduce in the uh, dictionary, it says hinder. So that's when Jesus was talking to somebody that was hindering him, like the Pharisees. And he said, you are of your father, the traducer. You are of your father, the law. You are of your father, mo the Mosaic law. And then when Peter, when Peter said, you're not going to go to Jerusalem, you're staying here with us. He said, get thee behind me, hinder or traducer. You're trying to hinder me. And then there's a, a root word to that is number one, two, two, five. And it says, again, traduce or to accuse. That's all that means. See that? 
Yeah. And, okay. And then let's go look at 1139. And this says they brought to him a dumb man possessed of a devil. So this is going to be the one probably that's a supernatural spirit. So I'm going to, I, well, we, we'll just do it here. It's just as easy to do it here. Possessed with a devil. Could be exercise of a Damion. So what's a Damion? So we'll go 1142. Damion is a supernatural spirit of a bad nature. And of course, they put devil down here. But as I explained to you guys before, and lots of people, when we were created, we were created supernatural. That's other than natural. We were not carnal flesh beings. We were like God. We were superimposed with God's very spirit, God's breath, God's ability. And then uh, where it said of a bad nature, uh, because man took on a mistaken identity, saw themselves as sinners, saw themselves as less than, then that bad nature come upon them and, and they were living other than their true nature. And so they were sick. Where it says dumb here, it means blunted or he couldn't speak. That's all it meant. He wasn't able to talk. And they just wanted them to think that they were possessed of a devil. <clears throat> uh, Rod, do you think that applies to what's going on with the riots and did they? Yeah, they're just, they're functioning out. They're carnally mindful people and carnally mindful people, it's death. And they, and, and people can do some very tough things. I mean, you know, people can kill people and people can, uh, just like the guy that was in the cave that was chained up and chains, he broke his chains. He was mentally ill. So they, they're still people with a supernatural nature. Yeah, well, they still have the, they still have the very spirit of God or the breath of God in them but they, they're functioning out of, of, of carnal nature. That really should have said carnal. Uh, I would have put, if I was writing that, I would have said of a carnal nature, not a bad nature. Uh -huh. but, you know, our true nature is God. Right. Our true nature is we are supernatural. We are other than carnal, other than flesh. And so every place that they said that they brought somebody to Jesus that was vexed of a devil or all that sick, mentally ill, devil possessed, whatever, that is Damion. You'll see that over and over and over. And then we have 1140. Uh, and when the devil was cussed out, the dumb spake. So that's probably going to be the same thing. Right there. Yeah, it's the same thing. They put, they put a demoniac. De de because they, but it's actually Damioian, and it's, it says extension a deity, but it's a supernatural spirit. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Same thing. And then uh, I think that's pretty bit. That's all the numbers that you use right there, every one of them. So when, it, when, when Jesus used traduce, that was when somebody was trying to hinder him the Pharisees, his disciples, and that would be, that would be the word traduce. And then when people were brought to him that were sick, mentally ill or whatever, and then that was Damion. That was the condition of a person that's affected from believing that they're naked, believing that they're opposite of God, not living out of the breath of God. Okay. Living, living out of car carnality. Okay. So it helps when you're telling people if you can show these things to them, you know, uh, when Butch Hodge and I started a church together a few years ago, we had a large group of people that had never heard me teach before. And so it was hard for them for me just to get up and say, well, this says this or this says, so I did this in a class and they all came and it really helped them a lot. And they wasn't resisting what I was teaching so much because they actually saw it. They saw where the words would add it. When you see when those words are added, you've got to be literally, seared, your conscience is seared and you don't care, or you've got to wake up and say, wow, we have been lied to. Yeah, we've been lied to. We have been the children of a great lie. Okay, let's go to uh, Luke chapter four. Yes, go ahead. People, you know, take the verse that says every scripture is God breathed. So oh, yeah. 
I'll, let me show you that. I'll show you that. Yeah, you know what I believe about that? I, I, there's not that many people on here. There may be some. Kay's on here. She's on. She's watching on uh, on Facebook. Uh, the reason I mentioned Kay is because Kay's my good friend. So when I see her name, it cheers me up. <laughs> I love Kay. Uh, so I. This is a bold statement. But if you're sitting under any kind of ministry that says that all scripture is inspired by God and they use that to beat you up, you need to run because it is not all inspired by God. So I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to take all scripture and it should bring it up right there. Right there it is. So it's Second Timothy 3.16. And so I'm going to click on the Greek and Hebrew. It wasn't too long ago I saw this, but can you read what it says, Kathleen? All scripture is given by inspiration. Yes, but, but what is is what is is say underneath it? Na 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 na. It was added. Wait. See there, nine 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 right there. Yeah. The word was added by the translators. It says all scripture given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and on and on and on. It does not say all scripture is. Wow. And religiosity wants it to say it because they want to be able to control people. Yeah. That's and powerful. Can, yeah, and you can look down through here and see all kinds of 9999 numbers that's added to scripture. Some of it, it's not a big deal but some of it, it's a major deal. It makes a big difference. Because if all scripture is inspired by God, then everything that I've done and my translation is a lie. And it's not. <laughs> but do we throw away our Bibles? No, we learn the code. We learn the, we learn the symbology of things. And we, we find teachers that can teach us these things. And they're there. Kay does it. I believe I do it. There are people out there that are, are not a lot of translating but it's available today and we can find out the truth and to me the code to understanding the bible or the lens is the love of god and if it doesn't fit the eternal love of god then it something's wrong it's either mistranslated or it's from a false perception or they take something that was meant for people back then and project it all the way into our time today that's good roy love yeah uh, no, love is boy. a filter yes Barry? Yeah, uh, I was going to suggest you also take a look at the word scripture. Scripture? Okay, let me go back where I was at. Have you looked it up? Uh, I know basically what the Greek graphia means. Graphia. A document or holy writ? It's really a document or any writing. Right, a document and writing, yeah. So, because there's a lot of scripture that isn't in our Bible that's the inspiration of God, or a lot of writings like I'm glad you brought that up. the Gospel of Thomas and some other things right. that just were not included. Yeah, because not everything I use comes directly out of the Bible, but it will right. confirm what's in the Bible. It will that's confirm correct. it. But yeah, there, I've got correct. a lot of uh, ancient books. I've got a lot of ancient PDF files. And yeah. because I understand... Uh, you know, I have some understanding, then I can right. go through and discern what's not right and what is right. But you're right; there are other uh, there are other documents out there that have revelation knowledge in them, and we can learn from them. Right. You know, it's just like in this uh, the Global Grace Seminary, the Master's uh, uh, Arts for Counseling. You know, there and I agree with these teachers. They're saying if you say the Bible is the only thing that we can use to counsel and use the Bible literary, literary you're going to damage those people. You're, going to, you're just going to reaffirm how they feel about themselves. So there are, other, there are other documents that will help people. But again, I believe the Word of God will confirm everything. But we just got to learn how to translate it, understand the code, and understand how it's used. <clears throat> That's correct. Okay, so Luke 4. Luke 4 is... Uh, one of people's favorite verses or, or uh, uh, stories that try to prove that there is a, a devil. And that's when, when Jesus was uh, 
supposedly tempted of a devil. And I think most of you have probably heard me talk about this, but there may be some new people. But first of all, I want to show you is verse 8, where Jesus was uh, going through all this stuff. And he said, supposedly, get thee behind me, Satan. I hear people tell me all the time, well, what about what Jesus said? Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Well, let's look and see if he really did. So we click on number eight. We do Greek and Hebrew. Interlinear. Okay. And what do we see there? Na, 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 na. They, they added that. So who was Jesus talking to? Well, this is, you see this all over the place in the Bible. It's number eight, four, six, and it's auto. And it, it's, it's a, uh, it's to the idea, this one here, excuse me, is the reflexive pronoun of self right there. See that? I wish I had a highlighter to use on this. That'd be nice. What is annotate? Oh, I can spotlight right here. There we go. I can circle that. Oh, that's good. Right there, reflexive pronoun. Wow. He took himself up. That's what he did. He, uh, I don't know how to get rid of that. Is there any way, sir? Probably just get rid of, oh, I'll go back to mouse. There we go, there we go. So what Jesus did, for those who are no news to hear, Jesus was getting ready to enter the work of his ministry. And he needed to settle two questions, it was like we do too. He needed to settle one, am I who my father says that I am? Because father spoke to him. Father spoke to him when John the Baptist was by, uh, uh, baptized and said, this is my son in whom, in other words, I'm in him, in whom I am well pleased to be. And Jesus and father said several things to Jesus, but he had to know that he knew, you know, for sure. And then he had to decide, am I going to stay here and I'm going to let be the king of these people and let them come to me for everything? Or am I going to go ahead and enter the judgment of the world and let the Jews kill me, the, the Pharisees kill me because they hate me, and, 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 and leave and then show them some things through my resurrection? So he went on the temple right here where it says pinnacle of the temple. He didn't go out in some place out in outer space. He went uh, to the temple, got away from the crowd in Jerusalem, and sat there. In his mind's eye, he saw the kingdoms of the earth. Just like me today, I've been to Italy. I can see it. I've been over in Europe. I've been to Australia. In my mind's eye, I can see where Africa is everywhere. And he knew that it was all his to rule if he wanted to, because he was the only one at that time that was stayed in his original birth state, never lived as carnal, and he stayed in full contact with his God mind, with the Father. And so he was supernatural. He could have done anything he wanted, and people would have uh, followed him the rest of his life. But he said, no, I'm not supposed to stay here. I'm supposed to go. And then, am I who God says I am? And of course, he said, yes, I am. And from that moment, it said he entered back in spirit. He, he, he entered back in the spirit. And if you read after that, you can read all the stuff that he did. All the fame of him went all throughout the land, everywhere. And I'm not going to re do all this, but there's a lot I could teach on this here, but I'm not going to. But he took himself up. He was not led up by some kind of devil. And there, but what, he, what, it, what it was, where it said Satan and devil, he was having, experiencing these traducing thoughts. Like, yeah, it is yours. You, you can take it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if I knew that I was in full contact with God's mind, and I am, you know, that I'm in full contact, and I was functioning supernaturally, I'll tell you what, I better have my mind stayed on God, or I might use that for myself, right? And Jesus could have very easily. But he didn't for us. But he didn't, because he never used his powers for himself whatsoever. And that's what we've got to understand. When we tap into who we are, and the, uh, we're, when we function in the wisdom of, of knowledge, and uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah, excuse me, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm typing, I shouldn't be talking while I'm typing. When we function with a gift of knowledge, we should not use that to glorify ourselves. 
but people do, and they allow people to almost worship them. When we, when we, when we really learn how to minister healing to people, we, we shouldn't let that glorify us, but yet we do. But Jesus and, and other, there's other master teachers that have mastered living out of their spirit, and they only do it to bless other people. They don't do it to bless themselves. But I'm going to look at this here. Mark 8, oops, I typed it in wrong. Mark 8, 33. Uh, thank you, Roy. I have to get off now. All right. Um, I'll watch you, the rest on Facebook. Are you all, all right. right what you, are you all right what you heard? Yeah, good. very good. Very good. All right. We love thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, I've, I've got a wrong verse there, so I'll just go to something else. Okay, this one I want to show uh, in Romans chapter 1 and in uh, uh, verse 24, 26, Second Chronicles 30 and 7, Psalms 81 and 12, and Acts 7, 42. They all have the word uh, God gave them up, the phrase God gave them up. Now, I want to get all of them, so let me get rid of that and go back here. Gave. And up. There we go. Now, here's your code. Does God love everybody? Yep. Un unconditionally? So, when you're reading this, if God loves everybody, why would God give people up? And so, uh, let's just look Psalm 81.12. And look at the Greek and Hebrew. <clears throat> okay, so what it actually says is, "Ye uh, to desolation, therefore gave them up their fathers, God. It doesn't say God gave them up like it says in the King James. It says, therefore gave them up. And then you go to, Acts, where it said God gave them up. <clears throat> it says, then God, they turned then God and gave up themselves. See that them again, autos, that's themselves. So they gave up themselves to worship the host of heaven and they were worshiping slain beasts and all kinds of other stuff. But it did not say God gave them up. It says themselves. And again, we can click on that. And that's a, a reflexive pronoun, themselves, herself, so forth. And then uh, this one is what a lot of religious-minded preachers like to use. These two here to beat up people who uh, are homosexuals and lesbians. Or just gay. I don't know what to say today, but to be right. Okay, so let's go back over there. It says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness to the lust of their own hearts. But when you look it up the way it was written properly, wherefore gave up themselves God through the lust of their hearts. Isn't that amazing? Is it that reflexive pronoun again? Well, yeah, themselves. But even if it, if, even if it didn't say themselves, it says Wherefore it gave up them God. But it's it's themselves. Why does it say God? Right here, Theos. Yeah, but God. Why? I mean, if they, they gave up they gave up God. They gave up their contact with God. See in the King James it says, Wherefore God also gave them up. Oh, I I understand that. Yeah. So, but when you look up in the Greek, it says they gave God up. And then in verse 26, it's talking about the women, you know, women after women. And this is talking about people at the foundation of the world. And it does the same thing for this, for cause this gave up themselves, God, unto affections. So the truth is, everything that we go after that's carnal that's not God, that's not breath or whatever, we're giving up our God mind for those things that we do it ourselves. God could never give us up, ever give anyone up. 
That's good. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I know. And that needs to be taught. I, 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 I've tried to share this with some of my minister friends that are still teaching what I call outer court teaching. They don't want to hear it. They, they don't even, I, I said, just let me show it. No, I don't want to see it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. It's, it's very sad. Who do yeah. you think, who do you think is teaching this today, Roy? I don't know. I honestly, God, don't know. I, I listen to a lot of preachers off and on, and I, I still, I don't know, there's still a lot of mixture. I don't know what it's going to take to get it out there. Roy, <laughs> you got to get it out there, Roy. Well, Kay, Kay does it, and I, there's got to be other ministers that are. I know a year or so ago, we started seeing a, a lot of young men, a lot of women on Facebook starting to share. And, uh, but, but what happened, they began to go after other things and other revelations and other books. And I think they, they kind of wanted to throw their Bibles away, but we don't yeah. need to throw our Bibles away. We just, if, if people would just sit and listen to teachers, they don't think they need teachers anymore, Cecil. I think this word that's used today is so badly used. It's called destruction. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to take away something. I don't think it's a biblical word. Uh, I don't deconstruct, know. Deconstruct. Deconstruct. Yeah. Well, what I what what we need is we just need to uh, like Father told Paul. You know, Paul talked about how he needed to be freed from the law and his dependency to lean on the law. That he loved the law, and you know, so that was one of those things that he loved that he was addicted to, and he finally got to the place where he asked the Lord the Lord to free him from it, and God said, "Paul, my grace is sufficient," and to me, that was my spirit, my breath, you know. My mind, the mind of God that's in you, lean to that. And when he did, from then on, he said, it's all done. Everything that, you know, and uh, there's some other places I looked up I was going to show you guys, but there's a lot of places where the, even the word Satan translates to be done. Wow. You know, uh, religion is Satan. If you want a devil, it's religion, religiosity. You know, yeah. it's religion that's men's religion. That's good. Okay. So how, how long have we been on here? About an hour 14, about an hour. Okay, uh, I want to show you cr Christ. I, I, I'm going to, uh, Cecil uh, recommended me, I wrote an essay, and I talked about spirit, I talked about Christ, and I'm going to be doing a, a four different hours teaching on that. And so, uh, uh, but I want to show it to you right now. So I'm going to go to the rule of first mention, and that would be Matthew chapter one. Oh, that's powerful. Rule of first mentioning. Yeah. Anytime you want to understand a particular word or statement, you yeah. want to go to the very first mention of it in the Bible. Right. So, you know, I still hear a lot of ministers saying Christ when they're talking about Jesus. And I understand it, you know, because all of our life we've been saying Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus, and it's all through the Bible, Jesus Christ. But literally, from what I know now, I'm saying Jesus, the one that stayed in contact with his God mind. But first of all, Jesus' name, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is Iesos, I-E-S-O-U-S. That was Jesus' Greek name instead of Jesus. So I don't know if y'all have seen that before, but I see that in a lot of old writings. They call Jesus, with that, they we use that word right there. But here's Christ, okay? So the first thing that we see is anointed. And yes, Jesus was anointed. You know, he was set apart. Uh, one of the, 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 the first mention of the word anointed is when David was anointed with a horn of oil, but it actually means cons consecrated. And to be con consecrated, it means you've seen something. So in order for Jesus to do what he did, he had to see something, right? He had to see something. And how do you see spiritual things? You stay in contact with Father God. So when you Greek, when you click on that number right there, it says the idea of contact. And then they wrote, the translators wrote, smear, rub with oil, consecrated to an office of religious service. But literally, the idea of contact means to stay in contact with Father God. If, Barry, if I stayed in contact with you nonstop, I mean, we talked all day, every day, and I would come see you, and I was always in contact with you, would I not be sharing part of your life or a major part of your life? I would be. Whoever you stay in contact with, who you know, I stay in contact with Kay, and we share a lot of understanding and, and teaching and 
I stay in contact with a friend named Butch Hodge and I, you know, not enough or he would, he would invite me to come to his lake place and fish. I hope he's listening. <laughs> uh, come on, so, Butch. Come on, Butch. So that's what that means. It means contact. It means to stay in contact. And so, uh, and I talked about the only begotten, the word begotten to means to stay in your original state. And Jesus stayed in his original state. Does that make sense? Yep. Now, what I think is really cool is this 5530. When you click on that, it says to furnish what is needed. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Or to graze, like you're grazing on something. So literally, when you stay in contact with Father, Father is our source. Father is our supply. Breath is our source. Breath is our supply. And it will furnish whatever is needed, or I like to say required. In other words, I graze on it. I, I feed on what the Father's teaching me and telling me. And then it says, also, I, I went back there through idea, but it says to handle. In other words, so I'm, I'm handling the mind of God. I can, I can minister out of the mind of God. Does that blow your mind? Sure does. Stay in contact. Mm -hmm. So it's not just Jesus, the anointed one, because that makes it just Jesus and not us. It's Jesus stayed in contact. We can stay in contact. And that's why God told Paul, Paul, my grace is sufficient. In other words, lean to your renewing mind. Did Paul realize that? And that's why Paul said, don't be conformed to this cosmos system anymore, but be ye transformed by the renewing mind, not the renewing of the mind. They added that, be transformed by the renewing mind. So literally we need to stay in contact with our God mind. And, if, and literally see, so if we were counseling people, one of the greatest things we can say is really all you need is to get in contact with your God mind. Yeah, that's just the whole of everything right there. The whole of everything. Because right it, will, it, will, it will correct your identity it will bring you into divine alignment. And that's what we need. We need our whole body, our whole being brought into divine alignment so where we live and move and have our being exactly the way Father God created it. Till then. Perfect. Right there is the essence of everything right there. Right. And then, you know, uh, uh, Genesis uh, 2-7, I think it is. Oh, that's my favorite scripture. Is it really? That is my very favorite. That changed my mind completely about life. Genesis 2 7. I'm, I, uh, okay, breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. Okay. So, what I want to look at, I want to look at this breathe. Right here. And it's to puff to blow, and so it's the same thing as breath, and that's spirit. It's another, yeah. it's another word that represents breath or spirit. He breathes himself, and here's another, the breath of, it's, a, it's a, another word, divine inspiration and intellect. So when Father breathes into man, he breathes his entire being, and that's why I say he graced. That's why I believe uh, breath and grace can be used synonymous with each other. He graced us with his intellect. He graced us with his life. He graced us with what is so his everything about Father God. He put that in the man, and we never lost it ever. His it life just, is our life. That's right. We just thought we lost it. Yeah, his As life. Man, man thought life. that. I shouldn't say way that we thought it because we were taught that we were. But yes. And then, then, then again, here's cool of the day. Because it says that he walked in the garden, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And that word cool of the day is Ruach. Or phrase cool of the day, where are we at? Right there, cool, the cool of. The cool of is Ruach, breath, the spirit. God, and the Bible says that God is breath. And they who want to ascertain and seek and desire to know Father must do so in breath, breath. And, in, and in truth. And Jesus said, the truth will make you free. And, you know, so many preachers and teachers 
if they're really teaching the people the truth, they would be free by now. Sure. There's been enough preaching. If it was really the truth, we would be made free. And free means, made free means to experience our freedom, experience our union with God. Jesus, and this is something else that gets me, people all the time that say, Jesus said the truth will set you free. No, yeah. it's make you make free. Make you free, yeah, correct. Yeah. Jesus set us free when he, in, his, in his earth walk, when he taught us the truth when he revealed that the Mosaic law was, was dead, it was void, it wasn't working. He set us free. He, he took our, mix, our mistaken identity with him. He didn't drag all men into him. Like one of my teachers said this week, he, he didn't drag all men. They said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all. They added the word men. Yeah. You want, you want to see that? That's good. Are you, are you just going to believe me? <laughs> <laughs> faith, brother, faith. Uh -huh. I'm going to show it to you. Yeah, I know. All men. Oh, there's too many. I'll do if I be lifted up. I'm not good at these addresses. That's one place that I'm kind of weak at. <coughs> there it is. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. John 12, 32. And we do the Greek and the interlinear. Okay. See right there, men. It does not say men. Yeah. He drew all. every. He drew all that hindered. Everything that hindered. If I be lifted up from earth, all will draw. Actually, it says all will draw unto me. That's what it says. All will draw unto me. It doesn't even say I'll pull anything in. I hadn't. I hadn't paid attention to that. So we're we're coming to him. Yeah, we're coming to know him. We're 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 being elevated. See, be lifted up means elevated, and all will draw. Uh, is, is the word drag? But literally, we we will we will come into him ourselves and to and to being like him. Yeah, I had heard one time that that draw was means drag. Yeah, it says drag right there. We'll draw to drag. Yeah. Right here. And then there's another word. What does it say? To take for oneself. I like that better. Take so literally, oneself. yeah. And so lifted up means elevated, not at the cross, but elevated in understanding. It says of an attitude. It's an understanding. When we realize what Jesus was here to do, then it will cause us to, to enter into everything that he showed us we are. That's perfect. I like that of myself there, so, yeah. I've heard, Does that help? Yeah. Yep, definitely. I've heard that verse translated. Hey, which one? Uh, when I be lifted up, I'll draw, I'll judge myself. But I don't see where it says that. I've oh, you want to say it again? Yeah, I had it up there. Yeah, I mean, I just didn't see how. Let me go, let me go. Let me go back. I've heard people teach that it's judgment. Uh, That's okay. I, I no, I don't mind that. There we go. So you want to see the next verse? No, it's that verse. I, okay. I, yeah. Okay, so it says, and I, if I be lifted up, and right. people think that's either singing and worshiping him, or I don't know what they think that is, but it actually says elevate, to elevate and, and understanding. And it says from the earth, so that would be a point of action. And the earth is the whole of the earth, basically. Then it says all will draw unto me. Yeah. to take for oneself. So literally, I, I believe he was just saying that everybody's going to take what I've showed them and the life that I have for themselves. It's not going to be just him only. Yeah, yeah I see. That's good. Oh, we'll draw one to me. He said that anybody, anybody else have one you want to look up before we good. stop? No, no. Everybody satisfied? That's good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be sending you 50 questions 
true or false, multiple choice. <laughs> And, and we have to pass all of those to get next week's lesson, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely to get into next week's lesson. Yeah. But, yeah, there's uh, there's people watching on Facebook right now. I don't know how many, but there's there's uh, watching. So we appreciate you guys watching by Facebook. They're a little bit behind us on this here. So uh, next week I'm going to be on the Dr. Bill show, Dr. Bill Henshaw. I call it the show, the Zoom meeting. He's doing Zoom now, so – I, I think he's going to, I'm not sure if he's going to have people participate in that, but he'll be on, putting it on Facebook also. I mean, yeah, Facebook also. So, um, but I, I love what I'm doing and uh, I want to do this more uh, sometime next month. I'm going to be going a week with my wife. We're going to celebrate our 50th anniversary. It's July. Yeah, 30th, so hey, all we're right. Gonna, we're going to do that. Congratulations. Congrats. So those of you that watch a lot and pay attention a lot, I really, you know, if you're interested in doing a monthly contribution, uh, I really, I'm going to do some things that I'm going to make available to people that do that. Uh, I'm going to have this particular teaching that, that they will be able to hear. And then I will provide documents that go along with that. So you can have word documents so you can study it and you can turn around and teach it. So thank you for all being here. You guys on, uh, on, uh, zoom with me. I see Ivan, but I, well, I haven't seen Ivan's face yet, but Ivan's there. Ivan is, uh, my good brother down in Houston, Texas. He has an Hispanic group of people and others that he ministers to, and he's had me down there a couple of times. I don't know if you've ever heard of Organo Gold Coffee, but he's a big he's a big guy in Organo Gold. Hi, Ivan, say something to us. Hey, brother, how are you doing? Good. What are you doing? Working on your house? Uh, I'm working out. <laughs> You're working out. I'm, yes, yes. Hey, the Apostle Paul said bodily exercise. Uh, <laughs> Not profit. <laughs> I, I don't. I haven't tried to translate that either because I like it. But yeah, tell them about yourself. I don't know. I don't know how to get back up. You took it off. You there? Where did he go? He disappeared. Uh oh. Clark, we just finished up. You're too late. <laughs> if I hit that, it stops the video. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we lost him. Ivan. This is the screen Roy sharing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're going to stop it. So God bless you guys. We love you all. Thank you. God bless. Thank bless you. you. Roy. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Yeah, there we all are. <laughs> yeah, there we are. All right. Love you all. Yeah. Bye bye. Yes. See ya. God bless.